And I trained in lymphedema about uh, 17 years ago. So I came to lymphedema as a consequence of seeing patients with lymphedema. So let's see, I have no disclosures. Uh, lipedema is a symmetric edema in the lower limbs. As all you know, I'm mostly located at the hips and thighs. It's a chronic disease, mostly in females, though I would say that I examined some of my patients in male and found some nodular fat. I would guess those patients, if they have the estrogen trigger, they will have lipedema. The hypothesis is really uh, estrogen-regulated polygenetic disease leading to vascular and lymphatic abnormalities causing inflammation affecting peripheral nerve. I think it's the best hypothesis I found in the literature I reviewed. Main disorders considered for differential diagnosis will be lymphedema, either primary that you're born with it or secondary that would be because your lymphatic system is impaired, you were removed of lymphatic nodes, or you have radiation uh, due to cancer, obesity, lipohypertrophy, and venous edema. The staging, I found a little bit challenging trying to stage, and when I review the literature, and when I review my patients, I found different kind of way to describe the stages. So for the stage one, um, most of the um, um, description was a thick leg. And they have like, a, my patients have subtle skin indentations, um, mostly on upright position. They do have soft, soft, very soft skin, but they have a small fatty nodules. And those nodules, I would say, is following mostly the main lymphatic pathways. Stage two is a more pronounced skin indentations. Fatty nodules are palpable of but different sizes. There's a loss of skin elasticity and superficial hematomas is mostly present. For stage three, there's more pronounced skin stretching, prominent hanging fat pads and masses, mostly in the inner thighs and knees. But I have to tell you the truth, I have seen patients different fatty deposition, so it's not everybody follows the same um, description. Uh, upper arms are usually involved, although I would say that for stage two, I will have patients with early upper arm involvement. Um, you start to see some hardening of the tissues and vascular fragility. Stage four, then you have the large fat masses hanging, lobules on legs and arms, but if varicosities usually are present, and variations of the skin changes, including trophic changes, are seen, and hardening of the skin on, and tissues, we see uh, subcutaneous tissue, joint deformities that I have seen mostly at knees and ankles and toes. Most patients will say, um, doctor, I have pain on my legs, I have easy bruising, my legs or arms are swollen, I have some fatty lumps on legs, abdomen, and arms. I feel heavy. Heaviness is something that is variable. I would say that basically stage of three and four would, would say I have more heaviness on my legs. I feel weak on my legs. I feel fatigued. I'm tired. I have this swelling fatty deposition that has been worse after by puberty or maybe after pregnancy, contraceptive pills or indeed uh, patients that are having estrogen or hormone replacement. The pain score, I think uh, pain has been very underestimated in patients with lipedema or lipolymphedema. Um, we found that three patients of the 12 patients that I'm gonna present has no pain, uh, two have mild pain, three mm -hmm. have moderate pain, but six has severe pain in a scale from zero to 10. And being a physiatrist, I do manage pain, and I have not seen any patients with lipolymphedema being managed. The pain is not managed, basically. In the physical examination, most of my patient has a symmetric fatty deposition of the legs, abdomen, and arms. Superficial varicosities may be present. Bruises, 
tenderness to palpation is a very different situation patient by patient. I would say that the proteal area is more painful. Although when I examine other fatty areas, they do have pain in other fatty deposition areas. They have hypermolar joints, most of my patients, non-peeling edema, usually they are a spare. Later, at stage three and four, we do see the stemmer sign, but even in lymphedema in our patients, the stemmer sign is only present in 50% of the patients. So we are not expecting of all the patients having lipolymphedema stage three and four to have a stemmer sign. So stemmer sign is the thickened skin at the base of the second toe or second finger, and obviously it's positive in most of those patients. The BMI, in my patients um, were about, was about 40.44. Um, so if you see the graph, you see patients even with stage one, they have 37 up to 57.1. So you have definitions of the BMI in the slides that's more than 25 is obesity, more or equal to 35 with two comorbidities such as hypertension or diabetes will be morbid obesity and more than 40 will be morbid obesity. So as you see the staging from one, you can have a 47 uh, BMI, but certainly stage three and four, they all above 40. Comorbidities. I found my patients not have more than 10% of diabetes or glucose intolerance, they do have high blood pressure. This is not all of the patients, but this is what I have found. Obesity, arthritis is mostly at spine, lower spine, hips and knees. Thyroid disease could be hypothyroidism, that's the most common. Goiter or um, autoimmune uh, thyroiditis. Probomyalgia, it is a challenge for diagnosis having uh, lipidema. Because of the points of tenderness, you do have a lower back, the latter aspect of the, of the hips, and you have the inner aspect of the knee. So you have six points of fibromyalgia that you will need only 11 to do the diagnosis out of 18. So uh, it is really challenging because the patient has pain on their fatty tissue, so certainly in the same area where you're gonna check or um, touch or palpate for the fibromyalgia uh, points. I found autoimmune disorders like systemic lupus uh, SLE, RA, polycystic ovaries, IBS, gluten and lactose intolerance, breast, cervix, malignant neoplasm, carcinoid tumor, adrenal adenoma, bronchial asthma. So in my patients, the number one condition of comorbidity was hypothyroidism, followed by osteoarthritis, hypertension, hyperhomocysteine, vitamin D deficiency, hyperlipidemia, venous insufficiency, elevated liver enzymes and IgA deficiency, followed by elevated factor eight clotting, cancer or tumors, adrenal insufficiency, fibromyalgia, diabetes, glucose intolerance, neuropathy, and vitamin B12 deficiency. Most of my patients, this is very interesting. At least two or three of my patients that we included in this uh, data, they have had gastric sleeve and gastric bypass. The issue here, they are enduring issues of um, vitamin deficiencies after iron deficiency, after they have done this um, gastric bypass or gastric sleeve, but they still have the fat in the position, and it's still nodular, and it follows the same pattern as the lipidema. It doesn't go away. Um, some of the patients have had removal of ex ex excess skin after bariatric surgery, and I will say again, it, um, they still have the same pattern, even that they have done the, uh, the, skin, uh, the excess skin uh, removed. We have other patients that have hysterectomy, cholecystectomy, total knee replacement because of the arthritis at the knee, lumbar laminectomy, and fusion. The abnormalities 
Low vitamin D, usually less than 15 nanograms per milliliter. Elevated CH15 as the presence of um, chronic inflammation. Elevated homocysteine that when present, you can have strokes and predisposed to strokes and cardiovascular disease, heart attacks. Elevated cholesterol, low HDL, high LDL. Elevated fasting blood sugar, high A1C. Uh, immunodeficiency as low IgG, IgA, elevated IgE, elevated liver enzymes, weak fatty liver, elevated chronic factors, predisposing a uh, higher risk of developing deep venous thrombosis, elevated creatinine clearance, low EGFR, so those patients have kidney insufficiency, low hemoglobin level, iron deficiency, anemia, and cortisol, I have adrenal insufficiency as well as elevated cortisol in the morning. Lymphoid scintigraphy is a main uh, study that I will use in all my patients. It consists of an intradermal and orsus cutaneous radio tracer injection between toes and fingers. Uh, what happened is does, the main reason we do this is to evaluate the lymph flow if there's any obstruction or abnormalities of the lymphatic system. So what's gonna happen, everybody's a little bit afraid of having this test, it's a little bit of a prank between your fingers or your toes, and what we're gonna inject is a sulfur colloid that will be transported into the original lymph nodes and the lymphatic system. So it's routinely used for evaluation of a swollen leg, and this technique is important to know the pathophysiology of the edema. So this will be a normal uh, lymph scintigraphy we will see in the five minutes that will be the immediate film that you don't see mostly of the uh, uh, growing lymph nodes. But I would say that by 20 minutes to 30 minutes, we are supposed to see, we are expecting to see the lymphatic lymph nodes and some of the uh, pelvic channels. And 150 minutes is obviously some uh, sufficient time to see the inguinal lymph nodes and the pelvic lymph nodes. In my patients, 100%, and still today, they present lymphatic abnormalities, starting at stage one. I was very much surprised at stage one because <coughs> lymphatic abnormalities. They were either a large, <coughs> delayed lymphatic flow, lymph pooling, uh, they may show collateral, or non-visualization of the lymph nodes or enlarged lymph nodes. So I would say <coughs> definitely this will be lipolymphedema since the stage one up to stage four. So venous insufficiency is so common in 92% of the patients. I rarely see though patients with the venous thrombosis. All the patients will have an abdomen pelvic CT scan and the most uh, common uh, finding would be the fatty liver, enlarged liver, goldstones, we can see a large pelvic lymph nodes, atherosclerosis, pelvic hernia. We have found some patients with pulmonary nodules, constipation, adrenal adenoma, and pancreatic fatty atrophy. Echocardiogram. We do echocardiogram in all of our patients. We have found 67% that they have left ventricular hypertrophy, mild diastolic dysfunction. So it means that those patients that even they have not been diagnosed with arterial hypertension, the heart is having some issues very early. So it is important that patients should be assessed in this respect. Treatment, minor lymphatic drainage, decongestive therapy, application of multi-layer bandages as phone and short stretch bandaging is a main goal of treatment. Use of compression garments will be arm sleeves. Uh, very seldom I will have patients accepting use arm sleeves for um, uh, lipidema in the upper extremity, either capri or, or longer than capri pantyhose with micromassaging garments are very tolerated. Low pressure is very tolerated than high pressure I think because of the pain issue. Night garments and elastic compression garments are very poorly tolerated. It's important that the patients get good sleep at least seven to eight hours and exercise. Exercise with low impact aerobic exercises, underwater exercise is easier, general stretching, strengthening with progressive resistance and elastic bands. 
So you don't have to be worried that if you do exercise, the edema is gonna get worse. That is not, doesn't really happen. Current lymphedema will be causing immune dysfunction as well as recurring insulin infection, chronic inflammation and progressive fibrosis, and more adipose tissue deposition. Diet should be anti-inflammation diet with high omega-3, uh, green leafy, dark berries, avoid allergic sensitive foods, and reduce simple sugars, eggs, and dairy gluten. Interventions, uh, we have to um, correct the deficiencies, either any kind of vitamins or needles, and we should um, uh, use the antioxidants, anti-inflammation. Selenium, so I already mentioned, in a dose of 200 micrograms once a day. Bioflavonoids, it could be contained um, in vascularia um, with the most important uh, citrus flavonoid would be diosmine in the dose of 500 once or twice a day. And acetylcysteine, uh, I have found very beneficial for my patients. Beta glucans, very important that they will um, be sure that they are not allergic to mushrooms or barley, wheat, and rye in the order of 500 milligrams per day on an empty stomach with eight ounces of water. Liposuction, very brief. I had a patient with stage one slash stage two. She, she was very driven to have surgery. She has a water assisted liposuction. Her lymphocytography showed uh, uh, lymphatic abnormalities, as you see, very early in time. She had the liposuction with good results, and she continued to do her diet exercise to control uh, her lipolymphedema. Conclusion, I think the lymphatic abnormalities are very evident in early stages, and we have a wide array of comorbidities and multiple treatment and interventions. Effectiveness and long-term, I think it's gonna be something in a question mark right now. We'll see as we proceed how we're gonna do better in the future. Thank you very much.